Annotating an article is a kind of detailed note-taking. Researchers use annotation to better understand material and to help organize what they read for use in their own writing. By following a pretty simple process of annotating the articles you read for class, you read more actively and keep track of what you read for discussing or for writing about later. Annotation can be done the old-fashioned way, right on the paper you're reading, or you could upload your material and use an online program like Digo, Annotate, Markup, or even a Google Doc. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the old pen and paper method. The process is the same, the only difference is the tool you choose. Annotation, really interacting with a text, includes noting the important stuff about an article, things like the main point or thesis, the purpose of the writing, parts that you find confusing, parts you don't agree with, words you don't understand, major findings, theories, especially if they're the ones you're discussing in class, the overall contribution of the work to your discipline, like how it compares to other articles you've read on the same topic, important information about the author or authors, and search terms for finding more information on the same topic. This skill is crucial when doing research for your project or thesis. You can make notes directly on the article as you read, but even better, start with a clean document and take notes there. You can always attach it to the article. This is especially helpful when compiling notes and information for an annotated bibliography or a literature review. Start with the source information. If you want to plan ahead, create a citation in the style you use in your discipline, like APA or MLA. Creating the citation at the top of your document might seem like a pain at first, but you'll be really glad you did it when it comes time to put all your sources together in one place. If it's an article from a website or other less conventional source, cut and paste the URL and date retrieved as well. This is even more important to do ahead of time. The next step is to start a key. The key is the list of symbols or colors you use to code your notes. By sticking to a standard set of elements, you can make marks on the article that you translate or explain in your separate note document. If you prefer a color coding system, by all means, do what works for you. Here, I'm offering a series of symbols to represent helpful annotations in the articles you read. Begin by circling any vocabulary you don't understand. Then look it up. You can't understand an article if you don't understand the language in it. Make quotes around actual quotes you want to save for use in your own writing. Of course, you'll need to attribute them, so make sure you note the page on which you find it. This, of course, means a question you have. This symbol could also refer to a question raised by the article or to something you find confusing. However you use it, make sure to write down the question or issue in full on your separate document. It's hard to remember all the questions you have while reading, so just making a question mark that you can refer to will help you hold your questions until you have time to discuss them with others. A star can refer to the main idea or thesis, or to the hypothesis being tested. It's important to recognize any theories being discussed, tested, or perhaps refuted. Mark theories with a symbol that helps you call them out, along with their creator or creators. In the background, or review of the literature that provides the rationale for the article, you may encounter studies or other outside information referred to by the article's author. Note the studies or articles and keep track of their references in case you want to look them up. Use something to highlight the author's findings. If you're preparing an annotated bibliography or literature review, you'll need to paraphrase those findings into shorter sections. Hopefully, even in the most humdrum article, you'll find a new idea or something really useful or helpful, or perhaps something that makes you angry or surprised. Take note of information that stands out. An exclamation point could be just the symbol to denote this. And last, but definitely not least, Consider using a hashtag to note terms that will be helpful in finding additional information on a topic. The purpose hashtags serve in social media is to group like content together. Subject or index terms do the same thing in library databases. As you do more strategic searching in the library, you'll start to notice the terms used by certain databases to refer to theories, terms, and other ideas or concepts. Having a list of key search terms for future use will come in very handy. Understand your reading goals. If you're reading for your own personal work, then focus on finding information connected to your research goals. If you're working on a class assignment, consider the goals your professor might have for you. 
they might want you to concentrate on creating a series of responses to questions or perhaps locate the main idea and or findings. If you are given an assignment sheet with listed objectives, you might want to look over your completed annotation and check off each objective when finished. This will ensure that you've met all of the requirements. And remember, if you need information assistance, contact your librarian.